Well, fasten your seat belts because we're going to take you on a journey through India's aviation market, which is often turbulence hit. Hello and welcome to this special episode of Man About Markets. With me, as always, my co-pilot, Mangalam. Sit back, relax, enjoy the hospitality that our crew has for you. If there is turbulence, <laughs> then we will ask you to fasten your seatbelts once again. But importantly, there are no emergency <laughs> exits. You have to be on this destination with us. It's time for takeoff, so let's push back. We will, and let me start by giving you a big picture of what the market looks like. Now, India is currently the third largest civil aviation market, and it contributes more than 5% to India's GDP, and it is growing fast. The market is expected to grow by two and a half times the current level by FY30, growing at a compounded annual growth rate of more than 14%, Banglam. Well, that's a quick snapshot, Ritu, and I'll take that part away uh, from you. The third largest market after US and China. In fact, that's yeah. what the latest available data coming in from the International Air Transport Association, or IATA as we know it, uh, indicates as well. India is the third largest domestic passenger market. The mm. USA was, of course, the one with the top spot with close to 20% revenue passenger passenger kilometer share, which is basically the domestic passengers market share in the world. It had 83% passenger load factor or occupancy as we know it as well. China at number two had 6% market share with 72% passenger load factor or occupancy as well. Now for India, with a share of 2% of the global industry revenue passenger kilometers, we're at number three. Yeah. And this is a measure, of course, of demand for airline services. But if you just take a look at the occupancy or the PLF, in the last four months, the Indian flights have been more occupied than those in the US, China, and others as well. What did I say? India has 2% market share. Yeah. Guess what? Bigger markets like Brazil, Japan, and Australia have a share of less than 2%. So, of course, a lot of people flying to a lot of places right. and more occupied planes. More occupied planes, but you know, well, how about the India market's growth? Because we talk about the potential, right? We not talk about, we don't really talk about how it is currently. Well, about the potential, there is a fair amount because this revenue growth trajectory is expected to continue. As per Kappa Research, the Indian intra subcontinent traffic, which is dominated by the Indian domestic market, is projected to rise at a CAGR of 10 and a half percent between 2018 and 2028. Where almost midway there and this growth rate is faster than any other large intra-regional domestic market in the world. So India is big and growing faster than any other player in the world. Well, you know, the aviation industry was one of the hardest hit by the pandemic, but the overall air travel demand is coming back to near pre-COVID levels. India's forecast to see domestic air passenger traffic rise to 160 million in this financial year and more than double to 350 million by FY30. The international traffic in India is similarly expected to rise from about 75 million in this financial year to almost 160 by FY30. Now, let's look at how, you know, this player, how the players in the market it really are placed. It is very much dominated by Indigo Airlines, which has a share of more than 57% of the entire air passenger market in India, followed by the Air India Group with a market share of more than 25%. Go first, which of course now we know has filed for bankruptcy, had a share of about 7%. What does this mean in terms of share for other players and pricing? We'll have to see how the story plays out. SpiceJet and Akasa make up the rest of the market. So this gives you a sense of how the market is currently placed and we'll see how it grows from here. We'll see how it grows from here and that you know, sets us up perfectly to invite the first guest on our show, Vinay Dubey, who's the founder and CEO of our latest airlines, Akasa Air, joins us now. While the airline is the latest, Mr. Dubey has seen a wide swathe of experience as well. From Jet Airways to Akasa, Mr. Dubey, thank you for joining in. What have the biggest lessons uh, about running an airline in India been for you? You know, I'd, I'd say there, there are plenty of lessons. Um, but uh, for us, uh, I think there are, there are three or four factors that uh, we have applied towards the creation of Akasa. Uh, one, is, one of them is you need to have a very, very competitive cost structure. Uh, which, is, which is something that uh, we have built into our plans from day one. Um, second thing is that you have to have an extremely reliable operation and a high class customer experience. And again, these are things that uh, lessons that we have applied to Akasa as well. Well, a competitive cost structure, very competitive market as well, Mr. Dubey, because, you know, uh, like we were just pointing out, Indigo uh, has a share of more than 57% and it's really a volume game, winner takes it all market, so to speak. Now, you've been in the skies for nine months and you've been able to get about a 3% share, but what is the opportunity for a young airline in the Indian market, would you say? First, I, I will challenge your premise 
of a winner take all uh, I, I think you know we have potentially seen some of that uh, in India but I would I would not be so narrow to say what happens let's say for the last four or five years in India is necessarily what happens in other parts of the world if you look at other parts of the world there are multiple profitable airlines and there are multiple profitable airlines that exist for multiple years. Uh, you know, I've given this example many, many times, but my former employer was one of many airlines in the US which between 2010 and 2019, this was really a decade of pre-COVID uh, years that multiple airlines were profitable in the US. Uh, so for me, these are some of the lessons that led us uh, to come into the market. Uh, and I think if you are a professionally managed and empowered management team, uh, I think you can actually execute a strategy that will allow us to compete with, you know, with the other players here in the country. Uh, and, and that's really the key is having an empowered management team that is able to focus on its strategy. You talked about a 3% market share. I'd say for the first uh, few uh, days or the first two weeks of May, I think we're close to a 5% market share. Uh, so we believe we are well on our way to creating a critical mass. Well, hold your thoughts, Mr. Dubey. We'll come back to you in just a bit. Now, this is coming at a time when demand for air travel is at an all-time high. Domestic passenger traffic averaged about 430,000 per day in April of 2023, which is a month gone by, which is much higher than the average of 373,000 passengers in FY23. Now, the industry-level load factor has also consistently been holding up above 85% in the last few months. And ATF, which is fuel, which forms the largest cost component for all airlines, has come off from an average of 120 rupees in the third quarter of FI23 to 112 rupees in the fourth quarter. So demand is strong, it is steady. Uh, things are improving for the aviation sector in terms of costs. But importantly, yeah. you know, the question is whether we have that sort of supply or not. Yeah. And I'm looking at some data here. As of now, we have 684 planes in India. That's the yeah. fleet size, which is slightly under 700, which is less than 3% of the global fleet of over 28,000 planes. This fleet size is expected to double by FY30. In fact, there have been more than 100, 1,100 aircraft on order over the next few years. And you would have read this in the newspapers or watched this on our channel as well, the recent mega 470 jet order placed by Air India as well. So there is a fair amount of demand, but at the same time, it is being supported by supply. Well, but that supply will not immediately come to the market. So let me pose that question to Mr. Dubey. You know, the demand for air travel, like we've been pointing out, clearly at an all-time high. But is supply going to be a constraint? Because these mega orders are only going to get delivered over the next several years. I think you've got uh, Indian Airlines as a whole that have placed some pretty large orders. And as bullish as I am, and, you know, I don't think you can find another person that's more bullish about the long-term future of Indian aviation, um, and as bullish as I am about that, I believe that uh, supply will not be a constraint. I think we will have a very healthy equilibrium between demand and supply, uh, and in large part because of, of the investment that the government is making in airports, right? We've gone from 70 airports to 140 with a projection uh, to go to 200 airports, some of these in, in very, very key areas that are constrained today. And I think it's a combination of the infrastructure that the government is focused on, the, the large aircraft orders that the Indian carriers have placed, that I think together will help keep pace with the, the increased demand here in India for the next you know, two decades. Mr. Dubey, you've alluded to Air India multiple times. Let's ask about Akasa's own plans itself. You've ordered 72 aircraft and there are more in the pipeline. You're also looking to fly international soon. What's your strategy there? We remain, uh, you know, on track based on, you know, what I have said previously. Um, I think there's nothing that has, you know, slowed us down. Uh, so growth is an important element, um, and we continue to get, you know, aircraft deliveries for our growth. I think our next aircraft should be here within the next 60 days, which crosses the 20 aircraft mark for us, which will put us in a position to fly internationally by the end of the year. We're well on pace to get our 72 aircrafts delivered by the, the end of the first calendar quarter of 2027. 
And as I said, we will be putting a much larger aircraft order in here in the calendar year 2023. With everything looking so hunky-dory, high supply, high demand, why is it that so many airlines are going belly up? Well, because running an airline in India is no easy task. While increasing demand has been boosting the revenues, what's also been rising are the costs. As a result of which, the overall industry is still making losses. Let's talk about Indigo, the largest player there. They themselves only returned to profitability after the pandemic in the third quarter of FY23. And that's just an exception. Most of them have still been in losses. Recent events have brought into focus the costs and risks of running an airline in India. In fact, no better than the former aviation minister and the current petroleum minister, Hardeep Singh Puri, to talk about this in just one line. He said this on the sidelines of the India Business Leader Awards. There is a saying, I shouldn't repeat it here, that if you're a billionaire and you don't know what to do with your money, buy an airline, you'll probably become a millionaire. But no, but seriously, seriously, Air India is a case in point. I was told that the effort had been made on two earlier occasions and you would never be able to sell it because somebody in our system thought you should retain 24% or 25%. Yes. So I used to ask them, you know, you, you took over a perfectly healthy airline, made a royal mess of it in 50 years, and now you want to retain that control. Why would anybody put their money in and buy it? The age-old maxim, how do you become a millionaire in the aviation business? Start out as a business, billionaire. Well, you know, uh, but let's talk about uh, a lot of casualties in the aviation sector. Go First is just the latest one. It's not the first high-profile carrier to go bankrupt and possibly not the last one. Because if you look at India's aviation history, it's dotted with a bunch of airline failures. From the days of the year, you had the fall of East-West Airlines, Modi Luft, Damania Airways in the 1990s after the deregulation of the civil aviation sector, the more recent high-profile ones like Kingfisher Airlines and Jet Airways folding up operations as well. Even the most influential corporate groups have found it very difficult to churn profits in this industry. Ritu. Well, that does bring us to the question, why is it so hard to make money in the aviation business? Now, th there are reasons that can be solely attributed to individual airlines, but in general, there are multiple issues which continue to plague the sector, and it really boils down to very little control over the excesses of running a full-service airline in what is an extremely price-sensitive market. Now, the aviation turbine fuel, or ATF, makes up 40 to 50 percent of the overall cost of running an airline, and that is highly tax with state taxes going as high as 30 percent on jet fuel then of course you have the rupee depreciation and this specifically hurts the airlines industry because whether it is the lease payment to lessors imported jet fuel the mro cost all of these are made in dollars and so a depreciating currency really pinches the airlines then you have regulatory uncertainty we've seen this play out in the case of uh, multiple defaults as well how you deregister export an aircraft in the event of a default or the fact that there are multiple regulators that uh, airlines have to deal with from DGCA to Airport Authority of India and so on, that also doesn't help. And then, of course, there is fierce competition because some players dominate the market. They control the pricing. You can't really go be an outlier. There are wafer-thin margins you have to work with, low FS, and hence, it's really a winner-takes-it-all market where volume is the name of the game. And at the end of the day, it is a handful of large players that dominate this market. Well, so, Ritu, you know, the only thing that I've figured which is thinner than a wafer are the <laughs> margins on the airline industry. In fact, let's welcome our second guest on the show now, Mayur Milak, who's the Senior Vice President Research Auto and Aviation at Asian Market Securities, joins us now. Mayur, right. welcome on board is what we'll say to you. Thank uh, you, Mayur, for your time here on CNBC. You know, we've been discussing how it's a brimming market, a huge potential, but a lot of challenges as well. In your analysis, what do you think are the one or two specific India challenges which perhaps, if taken away, could mm. uh, make the airline industry fly higher. But, you know, I think, you, I think you've summarized it pretty well. So there are not just one challenge that should be taken care of. I think the first and most important, of course, is the fuel cost, mm. Mm. right? Globally, I mean, we are taxed so much, so you, you really can't compete with global players, right? Yeah. So I, I, just to give you some analysis on numbers, uh, last year, the fuel cost was 61 rupees a litre. This is FY22. Mm. FY23, your fuel cost per litre has gone up to 120 plus. Hmm. Wow. So, you know, you've doubled on that cost and then you expect these guys to make money. So, clearly, the equation is not right as far as the PNL is concerned. 
Sure. Uh, you know, you move to the other side, there is competition, there is a lot of regulations to take care of. So, yeah, I think it comes with its own set of problems. You know, so what happens now? Go first is sort of, uh, you know, halted operations for now. We'll see what happens with the bankruptcy. Uh, will there be uh, better pricing, better margins for the industry in the near term? Well, from a consumer point of view, it may not sound great. But hmm. for an airline point of view, I think, yes, they get a chance to get a better pricing. Hmm. Uh, there is, so, you know, there is enough for grab. Uh, a spy jet has about 7-8%. We've, we've heard for a quite a long time now that their NCLT cases are, you know, yeah. even that is not turning out pretty well for them. Yeah. Uh, Go Air, of course, being the latest guy to move into NCLT. So combined, they have almost 15-16% controlled under them. Yeah. So yes, this is up for grab. And well, if they are not running their aircrafts, well, the end customer is definitely going to suffer on that. Do you have any analysis on the profile of the customers that fly? I mean, what proportion of the airlines get their revenue from corporate customers? How many of them are families? How many of them are middle class driving to regional areas? Would you have any sense of that? Yeah, no, to be very honest, I don't think they have really ever bifurcated that kind of classification. But mm. uh, the season will tell you all, right? So you know that Q3, uh, fiscal is mm. by far the best season. This is typically Diwali time, so you know for a fact that a lot of guys travel during that time. Again, this season, you know, between April and June, turns out to be smart because this, this is a time when kids are on, they have vacations, mm. so a lot of families travel. So, yeah, I think... Uh, the season definitely defines that uh, uh, the volume growth is coming from which quarter. The reason I ask you that mainly is because uh, to determine the stickiness of the customer despite uh, uh, an increase in prices, like you said. You know, if there is a customer who's traveling to family purposes or some retail customer would obviously use other options to travel as against a corporate customer who may have to travel because of work. You're on. See, I think honestly, if you ask me now, what choice do I really have? Right? If, let's say, if, if, if I have to travel with my family to Delhi, Hmm. Uh, well, f any which way, railway tickets are not available. Forget whether it is cheaper or not. Even they are not available. So if I have to make a plan, I have to fly. Mayur, we're going to thank you for your time here on CNBC right. TV 18. And let me come back to you, Mr. Dubey, because, you know, we were talking to Mayur as well about the go-first bankruptcy filing. Uh, from an industry point of view, you know, uh, what is your sense? What will it mean in terms of pricing, in terms of capacity, and what are the lessons for the industry? I think a lot will be made out of, you know, pricing and load factors. I'll tell you uh, that with, the, you know, the pace of aircraft coming into the market, uh, I am not worried, and as a consumer, I wouldn't be worried about pricing and, and PLF and, and any kind of shortage in capacity. I think uh, capacity is coming into India at a very, very rapid pace. Uh, and I think for the next 20 years, it's going to be a, a, a consumer's market. So I would first... Uh, you know, talk to all our consumers of every airline and say there's nothing that you have to worry about. Um, I, you know, I would say more looking at what's happened in the last, uh, last few uh, days or weeks. Uh, I think what we as a country need to do is to enact laws and regulations that make it, uh, you know, easier for lessors to take possession of aircraft in the event of a bankruptcy or in the event of default. Uh, I think we need to build and bring back the confidence that these lessors have in the country as a whole. Uh, and so that's really where my focus is at. All right, we have to take a short break on that note, but don't go anywhere. We're going to be back and discuss, as always, what works, what doesn't work, the yays and mays of the industry. And we'll also get answers to the bigger question, are the Indian skies clear enough for takeoff for India's aviation industry? Don't go anywhere, just a short while and we're back.